I do love me something sweet. And I remember coming in one time after working cattle and Shan had the kitchen smelling really good. It wasn't potpourri neither. I mean, this was coming out of the oven. And I said, say my love, what you got cooking in there? She said, I done stole it, and she talked Southern like this. I done stole it from Paula Dane, ooey gooey butter cake, but mine's better. The first thing we're gonna do is make the crust for this. Helping me in the kitchen today, my good friend Betty. Betty Crocker. You know her. She had some kids. I don't know if y'all know them or not. One of them was named Little Debbie. Yes, it was. But we're gonna take two yellow cake mix. I like to get the ones that say super moist. I'm having a lot of trouble. Two, what do y'all call them? What do we call them? You know, say it to yourself out there in YouTube land. Cackleberry rooster bullet. Two of them. Two sticks of butter. Melted. Wagon method. Barn method. We'll go with the barn method today, because I'm not used to fancy electrical gadgets. We need to turn that thing off before somebody gets hurt and put it away. Mix this till it's all incorporated well. It's gonna it sort of look like a dough. That's what we're after. And today, being as how we really love you, we're gonna cook it in a 12-inch Dutch oven, but make sure you grease it really well. And we're gonna just dump this in there, pat it out to make us a crust on the bottom. See, we got a little lip going on here around there, but that's about all it's need. Just try to get it somewhat uniform and level as the world goes around. In a conventional oven, you would go ahead and put all the stuff together, filling it all, and just put it in a conventional oven and bake it. But uh, not today, nope. We're gonna cook it the Dutch oven way and we're gonna cook this till it sets up first on the bottom. Let's get her covered up, get it hot, cause the quicker it's done, the quicker we get to eat it. Say, so do I look like that guy on that picture with that woman that's got a pitchfork? Oh, well, never mind. You probably wonder what I'm doing here in the- You have to flip it the other way. What? Your shovel. Oh. Say, say folks, I got a question. Y'all seen that picture of them people? No. We're here in the barn, the wind blowing about 40 mile an hour outside and it's February and if one of them sparks got out of that tub and took off, we'd burn it plumb to the Canadian line, we would. We built this table a long time back. We're gonna get us some of them hardwood lump mesquite coals out there. I'm gonna give them a little chopping in here. We're gonna go on a tall trivet got us a pretty good line of coals around the outside edge. I pulled them back just a little with this old long lid lifter. Got a pretty good layer on top. Now I'm on a tall trivet. The wind ain't blowing here in the barn and you'll be asking yourself, why is he on that tall trivet in the barn? That metal is reflecting a whole lot of heat back off that to that Dutch oven. So I'm gonna slow it down just a little. That tall trivet will do the trick. We're still gonna have to rotate here in a minute even though the wind ain't blowing because remember, that is how we help regulate heat. I'm cooking with hardwood lump mesquite and it is hot. Different coal make different heat, but that mesquite is plenty hot. So hot wood, hot metal, tall trivet. About time to check it is is, and I'm gonna see how we're progressing. Probably gonna scoot them coals in a little if it ain't doing what I want. This thing needs to set up a little. There is not a whole lot going on. It is hot. Instead of putting it on a short trivet, I'm just gonna adjust these coals accordingly. You've seen me push the coals in, get her a little closer around that Dutch oven, and load the top up just a little more. I'm speeding the process up a tad. It's like turning the knob up on the oven, but it ain't got no knob. We're fixing to take it off that heat there it is cause it's firmed up to the touch just a tad is what I was after, sort of like a sponge, but also it's pulling away from the sides of that Dutch oven. Mm -hmm. 
So we're going to start with some powdered sugar, egg, butter, and cream cheese that has been softened. Well, that whipped up nicely, it did, so we're going to add some vanilla. And a package of some crushed up candy bar. It's going to fold it in. I think it's the correct terminology. Let's just spread her out on top here. This is already looking good enough. I wouldn't even have to cook this to eat it, I promise you. Let's get it back on the fire and get it to go, and it's nearly time for dessert. Going right back on that same heat we had. We need to do that here. I ain't waving at you, it's the five second check. Can you get it this far away and hold it more than five seconds? Now I can there, but my old hand's been burned a lot. Over here, huh? The bottom, folks, doesn't have to be that hot. We probably got enough heat for that, because remember, we done cooked that about halfway through and set it up. We are gonna have to have some more heat on top. Remember, the bottom was nearly already cooked, so we got probably a medium-low heat on there. I turned the knob to medium-low, so that's about what it is, because everything we're really trying to get to cook at this point is what we put on top. We gotta give it some more heat. That's why I added the heat to it. Well, we have been rotating. We have bottom one way, lid the other. That way we make sure we're trying to even out some heat. Let's check this rascal and see if it's firming up a little. Ooh, looky there, folks, what's been happening. And you can see this outside edge is trying to set up. So top of this is still a little gooey, as you can see, but it's beginning to set just a tad. We've got a little browning going on right in the middle, so we're going to adjust that too. But we're coming off that bottom heat. You've seen that browning in the middle there a little more than anywhere else, so we're going to rake them back off the center just a tad and try to control that situation. Let's take a gander. Oh, that's pretty springy to the touch, and that's what I'm after. That's going to go ahead and set up. Still a little bit gooey, but remember the name? Ooey, gooey. That's what we're after. And it's a little springy to the touch, so I'm thinking I'm going to call it I am. Folks, you got to let that cool, because as it cools, it's going to set up, or as Shan would call it, congeal, which means to get thicker up on resting time. I looked it up on the Wikipedia I did. Now the reason we want to show you this is because it's a layered dish and them do cook a little different in a Dutch oven, I promise you. We cook this bottom and we let that crust set up sort of firm to the touch and then smeared a bunch of gooey goodness all over the top of it. When you have that much moisture over there and you've got a second layer, that's why you want to cook this deal twice. Saying you're going to make like some cherry almond bars or some kind of cherry fruit bars that you're going to have a bottom crust and a really moist, fruity topping, something like that, cook it in two rounds. That way you ain't as apt to burn something and it's gonna give that bottom crust time to set up and then you put that other one on here and you can cook it to finish the deal off. It's done. And when you usually cook something that's sweet and got a lot of butter in it, people show up. I showed up at somebody else's place. So we are gonna cut it, brother. Y'all too? Oh, yeah. And see what it, what, it, what it looks like in here. And it, I think it's, actually going to work. I don't know really how you're supposed I, to cut this. <laughs> the first piece is always... Ooh. But we have to check the bottom. Ooh, Ooh, got a little brown. Got a little brown there. Mm -hmm. You can see it cuts good. It sets up. That's why we cook this crust first on the bottom to let it go ahead and set up and then put the topping on it to finish it off. And I'm not going to eat now. I'm going to see if they fall out first. That's good. It's so good. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's one of my mm. more favorite it's got desserts. 12 sticks of butter in it. Uh, nice yes. jar full of milk. I'm going to fall out from the sugar rush. <laughs> mm. Mm. Well, mm. buttery. we thank y'all for stopping by over here at Heath and Cassie's house. And you might recognize these people. They are the proud parents of the Pickle Cooking Champion Group. And I'm in the mirror. <laughs> <laughs> We do appreciate y'all. We hope you like a sweet treat. God bless you each and every one, and hit that subscribe button. See y'all down the road.